Hey guys, welcome to the e-commerce paradise podcast. I'm your host Trevor and today I have an awesome guest on the show. His name is Nate Ginsburg. He is the founder of Sellerplex and he has some amazing accomplishments. He's an Amazon seller and he's been doing that for quite a while now and he actually was able to sell one of his businesses for around a million dollars. He had a really, really um, big exit and I'm just super psyched to have him on the podcast. Um, welcome to the podcast, Nate. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. And if you're listening and you're thinking, okay, like this podcast is mostly about high ticket drop shipping. Why do you have Amazon guys on here? Well, Amazon and high ticket drop shipping are pretty much the same thing. You're doing the same stuff. It's all about marketing. It's all about sales. It's all about copywriting. It's all about images. So Nate's going to have a ton of awesome advice for you guys that you can use for high ticket drop shipping. You can even get into Amazon yourself. And I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast are interested in selling on Amazon or are already doing it. So you guys are going to gain a lot from this podcast. Make sure you listen to the end because Nate has an awesome uh, free offer for you guys. So uh, don't wait on that. So um, Nate, tell us a little bit about yourself and your uh, story and how you got started. Yeah. So I first got into, I guess, online business. This was maybe 2013 or 2012 when I you know, first wanted to go off on my own. Um, met someone when I was traveling in Thailand and got really inspired to, you know, do my own thing. And, uh, you know, the first few years were challenging, um, you know, found some success also, uh, also struggled, you know, I moved back home with my parents and cause I, you know, was going broke and yeah. And that's when I, I, I started to get a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of uh, traction, just uh, freelancing and found some freelance clients and made a little bit of money. And uh, so, you know, was doing that for a couple of years that allowed me to start traveling. Um, I moved to Asia, was living in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and, you know, traveling all over. And uh, the, the freelance stuff was going, it was going okay. But I, I wanted uh, something bigger. I wanted like my own business, a real business. And that is when I got into selling on Amazon. So this was in 20, late 2014, I believe, is when I, when I first got into e-commerce and selling on Amazon. And yeah, that business did better than any of the other stuff that I was trying to do or trying to figure out. And yeah, it was uh, really, really exciting. I remember the, the like second half of my first year selling we, our sales like doubled every month going from like 2K in June or July and then doubling, doubling, doubling up to over $100,000 in sales um, our first December, uh, you know, holiday season. And uh, this was, this was great. <laughs> uh, you know, this was, uh, it was a really exciting time. Uh, also, it was really stressful, to be honest. Um, I mean, Sales were good, business was growing, but with uh, you know with Amazon, it's, it's it's really expensive to to grow, and there's a lot of a lot of moving pieces, having to deal with uh, the different product launches and importing and you know freight forwarding and finance and all these pieces of the business that were not, I'd say my you know skill set or experience, and so uh, around that time, I really. Uh, you know, got the team in place that would get the business in order to be able to continue to grow and allow me to do the things that, you know, where I was, what I was good at, what I was excited to contribute, uh, but then allowed me to, you know, delegate the other areas of the business that were, were really important, finance, supply chain, operations, you know, account management, uh, customer service, of course. And, and yeah, uh, got the team in place that, that really was, was better at doing their job than, than I was, which was great because to be honest, I am not very good <laughs> at the finance and operations and customer service. And, and, uh, yeah, so, so fast forward, um, about two years and unexpectedly had an opportunity to, uh, sell the business and was so this was this was a private buyer um it, it all happened really quickly i was you know living in vietnam at the time and you know all of a sudden had this opportunity to uh sell the, the buyer was this uh was a a pretty large chinese company and all of a sudden it, you know 
was was not even considering um, having an exit, and then all of a sudden, three days later, um, on a plane to China to meet with the meet with the buyer and you know try to come to a deal on you know the biggest uh, the biggest business opportunity of my career, and, and you know thankfully I had the the team in place that had the business in order uh, to be able to sell, you know, we had really, you know, we, we actually had, and we're on top of our financial records and we could show them, you know, in the, in the due diligence process, they wanted to see, you know, verification of financials, our sales invoices, you know, POs, et cetera. And, you know, thank, thankfully I had the people on my team that had me in the business on top of these things. So when we had the opportunity to sell, uh, you know, was, was able to take advantage of that. And so, uh, did and sold the business for just under a million dollars. And, uh, and yeah, uh, fast forward since then, uh, now I, uh, ended up keeping my team. So the business was the, the business that bought my business was, was big and they had their own team. So they didn't need my team. <laughs> so, uh, kept my team and now, uh, help other businesses get uh, prepared for and maximize for, for their exits, uh, doing the similar things that they, that my team helped, you know, me with to prepare my business, um, as well has have um, invested in, in a handful of other businesses. And uh, this really um, now to, I mean, I love online business and I think there's so many exciting opportunities around scaling these businesses and selling them and buying them and uh, just looking to, yeah. Uh, do more of that and helping more people to achieve, you know, better things with their business, whether it's exits or scaling or, you know, cash flow, And uh, that brings us to where we are now. It's awesome. There is tons of opportunity out there for investors and for uh, sellers alike. Uh, you can build an e-commerce asset, whether it be an Amazon store, whether it be a Shopify store, or even an affiliate blog on WordPress or something like that, you can build up these assets online and they're worth a lot of money as you found out. It's spectacular, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams before you got into entrepreneurship, you'd be selling a business for a million dollars that was just built online? <laughs> uh, no, uh, cer <laughs> certainly didn't. But, uh, but yeah, it's crazy how, how uh, awesome. you know, life changes or evolves. And, and if, you know, one of the most true lessons or, or, you know, powerful things in, in our, our world, I think is that you're the average of the people that you surround yourself with. And so that was something that like, I know that, you know, my life and career really started to take off when I moved to Asia and surrounded and started surrounding myself with a community of other entrepreneurs that, you know, were doing really amazing things and, and, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm a sponge. And so I'm hanging out with all these really smart, successful people and just kind of, uh, am able to learn from them and, and grow. And, and yeah, that's been, uh, you know, any, any success or progress that I've, that I've achieved in my life is, is really, um, you know, due to the amazing people that I, that I get to hang out with. And, you know, we, we were hanging out a couple weeks ago at a, at a really awesome event with lots of other awesome, uh, successful people. And, and, and yeah, I think that's, really uh, the, the key is surrounding yourself with, with the right people that, that pull you up. Couldn't agree more. I think networking is one of the most important things in business by far. And, uh, but what I'm really impressed with is that you've done all this while traveling. You weren't like sitting in a office cubicle somewhere um, in the States in New York or something like that and building these businesses. You were doing this while you were in Thailand. You were doing it in Vietnam. Um, you know, that digital nomad lifestyle is, is, is pretty cool. And I think a lot of people kind of feel like it's out there. It's just this weird ethereal thing they can't really get to um, that it's kind of like uh, scary almost, but uh, you know, it's totally possible. How, how did you get into that kind of lifestyle? What, what got you to want to start traveling in the first place? Yeah, good, good question. And, and yeah, so uh, I mentioned, so how I first got into any of this was um, I was backpacking in Southeast Asia. Um, I, so after college, I taught English in Korea. And then after my contract in Korea finished was backpacking around Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia. And it was when I was in, um, I was in uh, this little Northern Thailand town, Pai. And there is where I met the first uh, digital nomad, this guy, Andrew, who was, you know, doing something online. And, you know, he introduced me to, you know, really blew my mind that, 
like that type of a life or lifestyle was possible. Um, he introduced me to internet marketing, SEO, uh, to outsourcing, you know, um, uh, Odesk, you know, now Upwork. And yeah, all these things really, really blew my mind. And uh, after I met him, it was just really clear to me that like that was the type of life or, or lifestyle that I wanted to pursue. And so, yeah, then, you know, got back home, got to work. Like I said, you know, ups and downs. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, like that, that continued to be the goal and uh, yeah, was able to, you know, you can, I think uh, if you, you know, work hard and, and are, uh, you know, persistent and, and, and disciplined, um, you know, can, can definitely make it happen. After college, um, you said you went and worked in Korea uh, teaching, right? Teaching English, you said? Yep. How did you get into that? Like, what, what was the decision there? Was it just an open door? Someone introduced you to somebody or are you actually just... Uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, one thing I knew, so after college, uh, I, I didn't want to do something boring or, like, I had no desire to, you know, get some stupid job in a, in a, you know, boring office and, and not to knock, you know, jobs in general. There are a lot of great jobs and, you know, great opportunities. You know, for me, I just didn't, uh, I, I wanted something different for myself and, and yeah, uh, there were some, some other friends that I was just kind of talking about this with, and we were looking into different options of, you know, teaching abroad or whatever, uh, after we graduated. And, uh, yeah, it turned out that Korea uh, there's actually a lot of opportunity for English teachers there. If you have like a, if you have a degree from an in, a English speaking uh, university, you, it's, it, there's a lot of opportunity there to, you know, get jobs and you get paid, you know, reasonably well. Uh, and, and so, so yeah, was just kind of looking into that more. And then there ended up being like a pretty, a pretty big group from my university that, that went over there and, um, you know, we were all teaching in different parts of the country, but, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the university kind of made it, made it easy to, uh, to pursue that. Yeah. My friend uh, was telling me it's funny in Korea, but it's one of the hardest countries to learn Korean because everybody wants to practice speaking their English. <laughs> so I guess that makes yeah, sense. True. The high demand for English teachers. Yeah. So I guess, you know, if, if you guys are out there listening to this and you're in college or you're, you're in that age group where you're young, you're not quite sure you want to do yet. And you're trying to figure out like e-commerce or drop shipping or selling something online. Um, you know, consider that you should learn, um, you know, skills that are related to selling stuff online in college. If you're in there already, it's like, for instance, when I went to college, I didn't try to take a bunch of courses that were, you know, you're unrelevant to business. I took just business courses that I could. It was business, marketing, sales, accounting, uh, export, import, international business management, a lot of different things. And so you guys, you can go to college and college is a great experience. And then you can become a digital nomad after that. Just make sure you're trying to learn business skills along the way, because these days everybody buys things on their smartphones and through their computer. And it's pretty amazing what you can do um, with a small budget, a small startup budget. You can start you know, a, a small Amazon brand, you can start an e-commerce store for maybe a few hundred to a thousand dollars or something like that. Um, whereas other types of business models just aren't like that. So it's pretty incredible the opportunity that's out there these days. And Nate's pretty much a proof that you can start from very little, very little knowledge, um, you know, very little uh, money and, and actually build something that's super valuable in the marketplace that a big company, like a Chinese company would eventually acquire. And those Things are just mind blowing, honestly, because any normal business, you would have to have it for so much longer and have to have so much more, you know, uh, you know, you'd have to have tons of different things that you go through An online business isn't so complicated. So it's pretty exciting and, um, and incredible what you can do these days. Yeah. Just to uh, kind of add on some of the, uh, excitement or opportunity around, um, you know, building and selling or, you know, even, or buying businesses, uh, depending on, you know, what, what you're interested in. I mean, the, the whole online acquisition space is, is really growing a lot. It's still, it's still super early days, which means there's a lot of opportunity both for, uh, sellers and buyers. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's been cool to see the space grow and, you know, we know and are connected to, you know, some, some different brokers in the space and, and, you know, seeing, uh, yeah, their businesses grow and, 
you know, people that, that we know, you know, both selling and buying. Uh, it's, it's really exciting and the different opportunities to, you know, either, uh, you know, build and then sell a business and, you know, generate, uh, you know, potentially wealth for, for you and, you know, in your family or on the, on the buy side, there's also some pretty interesting opportunities. And, you know, even if you don't have that much money, there's different financing options available where you could go. And I mean, well, if you don't have any money, it might be a little challenging. You could, you know, you need to have access to some, but, uh, you know, if you do, there's different, you know, financing available that like, you know, just like buying a house, you don't need to put all the money up front to buy it. If you can, you know, finance the down payment or if you can, you know, put the money down for the down payment and then there's, uh, you know, financing available to, you know, allow you to buy these, you know, mid six or seven figure businesses for, um, I mean, quite significantly less money down. And, uh, and yeah, so, so lots of opportunities in the space and it's, it's been really interesting to see and, and, and cool to be a part of. Yeah, and you guys are doing a lot now to actually help businesses scale, which is definitely something I know that everybody struggles with, especially the solopreneurs, you know, that are building their own business. They get to a certain level, and then what happens is that you realize you can't do everything yourself anymore. You have to have a team. You went through a lot with you built your whole team up to manage Amazon services, and you have your own agency now where you're actually helping businesses grow. Let's talk about that a little bit. I think it's really interesting what you're doing to help people. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I think it's interesting too. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and yeah, something that I've, I mean, I kind of learned with myself. So I, I kind of got started or um, kind of broke the seal in terms of hiring for just random stuff that I was trying to do, you know, way back when I was getting started. So now this was like, you know, 2011 or 2012 that I kind of first started hiring or trying to hire and uh and you know getting started that early has really you know fast forward it's been you know six seven eight years i've hired hundreds of people like uh that that's now something that you know honestly like i, I freaking love it i mean i think it's amazing to be able to you know build these teams and you know to help you run these businesses um but i also know and you know have and now we work with a lot of people that you know, they're not really experienced or excited about hiring. They don't like, um, you know, they're uh, averse to the management stuff or <clears throat> yeah, any, uh, you know, a lot of these things, it's really just like what we, you know, what our kind of preferences are, are or, or experience. When. So we work with and see a lot of businesses that, you know, like you said, it could be a, a you know, a solopreneur who's got, they've got something going for themselves, which is amazing. They found some traction uh, you know, work with, a, work with a lot of e-commerce businesses that, you know, you're able to, to do a lot as, as a solo person, but, but then as they, as they start growing, the complexity increases, you know, different roles kind of, um, you know, uh, start to become apparent of, of what the business needs in order to, to keep growing. And especially if as the founder, you don't want to, you know, go crazy. And like, I'm, I'm the kind of person, and I, I really believe for me, for you, for, for your listeners, that uh, we should all focus on the things that we're best at and that we enjoy and where we can add value and get other people to do those other things. And so that's what Sellerplex was really started to do was to, you know, help businesses with all those other things that you got to do and are important, but aren't going to be probably like the, the fun stuff. And so, so now we help businesses uh, specifically around the, uh, the finance and operations side of their business, which, which are the two like necessary pieces that need to have in place if you want to sell. And so if you're going to sell your business, you know, necessarily you need to have good and clean financials and the business can't be totally dependent on you to run. And so with e-commerce businesses, the, the operations aspect are, you know, a lot of things because, I mean, most people aren't physically fulfilling their products. I mean, some people are, but, um, but yeah, but there's still different, like, you, you know, if the business is totally reliant on you um, to, you know, to operate, then it's going to be really challenging for a buyer to be able to come in and continue running that business and, at the same time, the finances, which like, 
I get it. It's not the most fun, you know, part of the business. And, you know, it's something that I personally uh, don't enjoy. You know, I don't want to be the one who's, who's actually like doing the finances, doing the books, doing the P&L. But uh, if you want to sell, like you need to have, you need to have the, you know, be on top of those things and it needs to be done correctly. Um, any, any sophisticated buyer or any broker, uh, it's like a necessary piece is getting those finances in order so that, uh, you know, so that you are in a place where you can sell. And so, so yeah, that's now what Sellerplex does is working with businesses, helping them to uh, get their business to a place where it is able to be sold operationally, um, financially. And, uh, and yeah, and it's pretty cool. Actually, a lot of the different insight you can get into the business when you're on top of the numbers that a lot of people are actually just missing out on because they, they don't know their, um, you know, profit per skew or, uh, you know, advertising portion of advertising per skew. Like there's all these e-commerce metrics that most, I mean, a lot of people, especially people that are starting out are blind to that can really offer valuable insight to help you run a better business. And so, so yeah, helping, trying to help other people to, uh, you know, increase the value of their business and, um, get it to a place where it's a sellable asset. Right. Yeah. Tons of really, really, really good things people need to know in order to sell their business. Now for people that are looking to scale and get to that point where they are sellable, um, building a team obviously is the most important thing you've shown that, you know, and, and not only for building the business, but actually living, you know, a relaxed lifestyle. So you're not going crazy trying to do everything yourself and, you know, traveling really, I don't even think would be possible um, at least in a relaxed way uh, without a team. How did you go about building your team? What were kind of the like, places you found them and, and how did you go about the hiring process? Um, maybe you can lend some insight into that. Yeah. G great question. Uh, and so we've developed uh, a hiring funnel that we use and now, uh, you know, we're hiring. So, so now I'm a partner in, uh, in five different businesses and, you know, it seems like there's always something that at least one of the businesses is hiring for. And so, uh, so we've had to develop uh, and I mean, it's gotten pretty effective at uh, deploying this hiring funnel. And so I say funnel because it's not, uh, I mean, like, like anything, um, you know, you want to have to, to get someone good. It's, it's not in my experience, it's not, it, you know, you got to go through a couple steps. It's not just a job post and then, Oh, great. You're hired. Like you want to find the best people, but you also want to be efficient with your time. It's not gonna, you know, you can't go and interview, you know, 20 different people for 30 minutes on a call. I mean, you could, but uh, that's not how I want to spend my time anyway. So, so what we do is, uh, our hiring funnel, we have a, uh, the initial job post that, you know, breaks down a little bit about business. I explain a little bit about me personally, um, you know, what the role we're hiring for. And then, uh, the first round of questions. And so we'll have, you know, 10 or so questions. What's your relevant experience? Um, why are you interested? What books and podcasts do you like? Where are you located? Uh, you know, kind of basic stuff. And then what we do is for people that, uh, for people that, you know, successfully respond to the first round of questions, follow up uh, as quickly as we can with a second round of questions. And the second round of questions will be a little bit more in depth, try to get them to like explain, um, kind of like talk more about their experience. So some questions we'll ask will be things like, uh, you know, tell me about a time you had to, uh, you know, work as a part of a team to solve a problem or, you know, when did you have to, to improvise to, uh, you know, overcome an obstacle or solve a problem? Um, you know, usually also ask them to like propose their, uh, starting rate or like get them to throw a number out first. Um, and, and then, uh, after the second round of questions, uh, the ones that successfully respond to those, then give them a test project. And so uh, I think the test projects are super important and it's best if it can be, you know, as relevant to what the actual job would be. So if you're hiring a customer service person, as an example, the test project could be, you know, just make up 
10 customer service questions and be like, all right, here's, you know, 10 customer service questions and, you know, make them challenging, make them annoyed, make them, you know, frustrated and, you know, give it to them be like, all right, you know, how would you respond to these questions? Uh, you know, take an hour or, you know, two hours or whatever and come up with responses and, Depending on, depending on how long the test project is, we'll, um, we'll pay for it. Because like some of them, we like to give them test projects that take a couple of hours or like a half a day to really get a sense for their work. Um, so, so yeah, that or like, you know, what other stuff if we're hiring, um, you know, if we're hiring for, you know, some supply chain stuff, it's like, all right, well, like we have, you know, X, Y, Z shipments that are here and they need to go here, you know, research different freight lanes and get quotes and, you know, really try to get them to, to do the work as much as possible. Uh, and then it's, it isn't until after the test projects that, uh, that all, all actually get on a call with them. Or now I have, um, someone on my team who's the one who's more managing most of the hires, but, uh, the idea is not to get on the call with them until after you already know that they're good. So by the time we get on a call, we have the first round interview questions, we have the second round questions, and we have the test project. So, you know, we, we have a good sense for, for their abilities. Um, and, and the call is really just to confirm their, you know, the starting rate, and just kind of, you know, get to know them a little bit personally, make sure they're a culture fit. And, uh, and yeah, it's by, you know, by this is the, the funnel that I've used for, um, yeah, I mean, probably, I mean, over a hundred people for sure over the years, you know, probably, you know, more. And, uh, and yeah, so in terms of where we are deploying these funnels, um, the, I still hire a lot from Upwork. Uh, the, my, my two main go-to these days are Upwork and Dynamite Jobs. Um, Upwork for, I mean, yeah, you can get a lot of people on Upwork and they keep changing the platform and kind of making it more annoying to work with, but there's still good people there. You still can find good people. Uh, and then, yeah, dynamite jobs. I've um, hired a lot of people there uh, recently and really good people. Uh, and that's, you know, more of the, the people that, you know, the location independent or digital nomad uh, type people. And, uh, and also it could be, I mean, I don't know if any of your listeners are like looking for opportunities or job opportunities to get started, but that'd be a great place. I mean, I'm posting a lot of jobs there. I know a lot of people that are posting a lot of really cool opportunities on Dynamite Jobs as well. And so, um, you know, depending on where you're at, if you're hiring or looking to actually get hired, uh, would, would recommend that platform. Yeah, that's the platform that guys behind the Tropical MBA podcast do and the Dynamite Circle, of course, which is their mastermind group we're both a part of. And then, yeah, so highly recommend that you guys, if you're uh, interested in either freelancing or, you know, hiring freelancers, Dynamite Jobs has got to be a great place. I haven't used it myself, but I'm glad to hear you have a good experience with it. It's awesome. Yeah, we've hired, uh, I mean, between all the businesses, I think there's been like five people in the last like two or three months. And, and it's good for, it's like higher level people. Like I've hired uh, like two general managers, uh, two like, you, you know, higher level marketing people um, hiring another, like looking to hire another kind of GM type for one of the businesses. So, so yeah, it's good. It's like where, like, honestly, if, if I was just getting started, you know, rewind, if it's, you know, 2012 or something, that's, that's where I would personally, uh, if, if I could give myself advice, <laughs> that's what I would tell myself to do when I was getting started was look for jobs, <laughs> look for jobs there. Um, and for someone like you or me, <laughs> It's funny because a lot of these platforms, I think, really came into fruition in the last maybe five or ten years at the most. Like they, they're all so new still, right? And mm, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Amazing what what's evolved in the last maybe half decade, you know. And I think totally. even into the future, you know, there's gonna be more platforms. Platforms are growing more. The freelancer world is huge, and it's a great opportunity for people on the buy side and the sell side. So. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And, uh, and I loved your tips about team building. I think the funnel is such an awesome idea. Uh, just using, you know, multiple layers to get people that are really good um, to come out the end of it is super smart in any facet of your business. And in team building, obviously, that works amazingly well. I think I'm going to use some of your tips in my business and my hiring now. So I'm yeah. super excited. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, remind me. So one of my, my big things for uh, next year is, you know, creating a lot more content uh, like you, you know, I mean, doing more podcasts, doing more writing, doing more publishing and uh, work and, and, and working on a post. I'm kind of like building up the content backlog to start publishing in January. But, uh, but yeah, I was working on a post around um, hiring. Happy to, happy to share with you uh, awesome. and any of your listeners. Will be, it'll be all published soon. And uh, is that on the Sellerplex blog or on your uh, personal blog? Uh, it'll be on the Sellerplex blog. Right now, it's a Google Doc that I can send to you, but it'll be on Sellerplex uh, yeah, yeah. blog. Sounds good. So you guys soon. check out Sellerplex.com. That's, uh, that's uh, Nate's website where, uh, where they do the Amazon um, and the team building and the, and the help with the FBA businesses. And I was just going to mention here, um, I noticed on the homepage, there's actually a ultimate guide to onboarding an FBA business after acquisition. So I'd like to talk about that a little bit on the, on the buy side of things, talking to investors about buying these businesses, acquiring them and, and actually bringing them on board and stuff like that. Um, it must be a whole process, you know, you have to go through in order to, uh, to really get a business, um, going right after you buy it, having to like figure out all the processes. What, what's that process like? Yeah. So, so it's interesting. It's really, uh, I mean the, on the buy side and the sell side, it's, it's really, you know, it's the same things that are important. It's just kind of looking at it through, through different lenses. Um, but yeah, so, you know, on, I mean, on both, you know, the buy side, the sell side, um, you know, getting on top of the operations, um, getting on top of the finances, getting, you know, the people in place uh, to be able to manage those for you. Um, you know, and in, and in both of those and in a lot of what, I mean, in the guide, it talks about it and, and stuff that we work with businesses now is like, uh, you know, you find different cost saving and, and also, you know, revenue generating opportunities by, you know, by really getting on top of this stuff on the, on the operation side, you know, there's likely ways to, uh, to save money, you know, to run the operations, run the supply chain more efficiently. And then also on the, on the finance side, one of the, one of the, or some of the cool stuff that I'm continuing to learn is like, you know, the different, um, you know, the different insight that, that can really come when you are on top of your numbers and like seeing things about, you know, one thing that like so many e-commerce businesses, uh, you know, are lacking and it's because like, to be honest, it's a pain in the ass is stuff like profitability per skew, you know, really seeing like skew level metrics, whether it's profit, um, you know, ad spend, ad revenue, uh, you know, seeing these, seeing these things on a per skew level can, you know, help you identify, you know, we, we see in like a surprising amount of businesses that, uh, some of the SKUs aren't profitable and like, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to see these things because you have your ad spend and you have cost of goods and you have, you know, these different costs coming from different places. And like, I get it. It's, it's, it's a pain, but, but yeah, uh, you know, getting on top of those things can be super valuable, uh, show you things that you need to cut you know, or things where you should actually be spending more money because you do have good margin, uh, you do have good, you know, ROI, and um, it's tough to, um, it's tough to, you know, you just can't see that unless you are on top of those things. And uh, so, so yeah, as a, as a buyer or a seller, um, you know, it's, it's important to be on top of <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. I think you're right. And, and some of those things that people just kind of sort of take for granted, like you said, that like sales are coming in great, you know, like relax a little bit and enjoy your life. But I think what you're talking about is so important and key is, is researching into what exactly is selling and figuring out how, you know, it's doing so well and then growing that and then things that aren't selling or aren't getting traffic and are just kind of cluttering up your catalog, whatever that means to your business, then cutting those things out and making your business more efficient and growing it and scaling it in the direction it should be finding those winning products, things like that. So important. Definitely. All that so, stuff also makes your business more, more attractive to, um, you know, potential buyers when it's like actually cleaned up and you're, you know, able to like show them numbers. I mean, it's, it's surprising how many like, you know, seven or multiple seven figure businesses that, you know, some of them that we work with that like, 
are not on top of their numbers and or, or or some of them they think they are but they're actually doing it wrong maybe they have some you know uh cheap outsourced bookkeeper that like it, if they don't really understand e-commerce it can be really challenging but uh uh but yeah that also means you know opportunity if you can get on top of this stuff can really um you know get valuable insight for your business um differentiate your business when you're looking to sell and uh yeah you know get get a bigger exit that's awesome. And you were talking about, uh, you know, before we started the podcast, you were talking about um, putting together some sort of a course for people um, that, that want to do this. Um, can you explain what that's going to be all about? I'm really excited about that. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, really excited about this too. And so in Q1, we are going to be launching our uh, accelerator program. And so what, what, the, what the program is basically is going to do is, you know, uh, work with businesses and walk them through a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about, um, getting on top of your operations, getting on top of your finances, uh, getting on top of your team and organizational structure that is going to allow you as a business owner to, you know, elevate from self-employed to actually being the business owner and, you know, running this business with processes and people that are, you know, executing and you can be in at a, you know, at the higher level CEO visionary role. Uh, and, and so get the people and processes in place and get the business on top of what it needs so that it can have an exit and not that it, you know, needs to happen anytime soon, but it's just getting the right foundations in place to set yourself up for a future exit, um, set yourself up for, you know, just to run the business, you know, profitably and cash flow it. And, and, and yeah, like I was saying, through, through this process, uh, you're able to identify different levers to pull to cut expenses, increase revenue, and just um, have a more valuable business. And so what, uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about what, uh, what we're going to be able to offer is, you know, there are a lot of courses out there that can teach you how to get a business started or, you know, maybe how you should do management, how you should do hiring. Uh, all, all that stuff as well, like the hiring stuff that we were talking about, like the hiring, team building, management, like that'll all be in the program. And and what what I think is cool about what what we're putting together is it's not just it's not just course content. It's really meant to be like a done with you sort of thing. And so yes, we have the content. If you you can go through it, uh, you know, videos, text, whatever to to understand these things. But then, uh, you know, right now our business, we also, we work with a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, other businesses as, you know, done for you service. And so, uh, my team that does, you know, finances for us and other businesses that manages operations, that manages hiring, um, uh, you know, they'll be also available to people in the course to, you know, help assist them with these different areas. And so, so yeah, there's going to be like, it's, it's not just videos, not just content. It's really meant to be, you know, actionable and, and for the businesses to come out on the other end, you know, greatly improved um, and, you know, kind of going from a, a not so organized, you know, whatever current situation to something that really is, yeah, like a real, a real business. And um, yeah, really excited about it. Anyone that's interested can check out uh, sellerplex.com slash go. And uh, yeah, opt in for more info. We'll be launching that targeting hopefully uh, February this year. And uh, yeah, really excited. Incredible. I'm excited about it too. I'll definitely get in there and uh, be on your uh, waiting list for when it launches. And I recommend everybody that's listening to this do it as well because Nate's got tons of awesome tips, advice, and it sounds like something that's going to be really, really, really valuable. Um, if you want to go uh, read more about Nate, maybe join his team, um, learn more about how he can help you with your Amazon business, you can go to nateginsberg.com. That's his personal blog and sellerplex.com we said before is the website um, where you can learn about scaling your business and team building and all that good stuff and um, making your business ready to sell. And if you're interested in getting the links all in one place, I'm going to have it on my blog at ecommerceparadise.com slash sellerplex. So you can just go there and find all the links right there. Um, thanks so much for being on the podcast, Nate. You dropped so much value. Um, thank you so much. And uh, the audience I'm sure is very thankful as well.
Hey, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was uh, great to chat. And uh, yeah, happy to uh, you know chat with anyone, reach out if you have questions about scaling your business, selling your business, need help with anything. Uh, yeah, let me know. Um, you know. Love to meet more people. Also, I don't know if any of your listeners are on Instagram, if they like uh, a combination of business, also yoga and travel, you can um, add me on Instagram, at Nate Ginsberg. Uh, yeah, really just uh, happy to connect with um, yeah, anyone if I uh, think I can help or want help or think we can do anything together. Uh, we'd love to chat. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, Nate, have a great day and we'll uh, see you out there. All right. Thanks, man.